Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. Delighted to have your company, Alan Ruff, Tom McManus, and Alison McConnell here with me. You can like, share, and follow us on Facebook. Don't forget to hit the follow button and share it with your friends. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. 13 players to self isolate at Celtic. The manager and his assistant, John Kennedy, will also have to self isolate after uh, government recommendations on people returning from Dubai. Dubai now on the list of countries that you cannot travel to uh, and it is a long list. Give us your thoughts on the Celtic debacle. Um, we'll hear from John Kennedy at the weekend. I was talking to the Celtic assistant uh, on this very issue. We'll hear from the SFA chief executive Ian Maxwell as Scottish football below the championship is shut down. The Scottish Cup cancelled uh, at the moment and to be rescheduled. Uh, this on the back of that Scottish Cup third round draw. Rangers extend their lead at the top of the Premiership. We'll discuss the weekend games as well. So uh, quite a lot on the list. And of course, we'll also discuss the comments made by the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon today. She is at odds with Celtic's uh, statement on the issue of the trip to Dubai. She says on the evidence and the pictures that she's seen, um, she certainly does not agree um, with Celtic making that journey to Dubai for warm weather training. Scottish football, it just keeps on giving. Um, well, first and foremost, uh, I think the first thing, uh, on the back of the one Celtic player who was coming back uh, and uh, delivered a positive test, I did on Saturday ask the Celtic assistant John Kennedy uh, about the real fear of more players coming back with a positive test or self-isolation. Uh, you've mentioned that the, the, the squad has had tests. Is there a slight fear at the moment, hoping that no one returns a positive test because that puts you right behind the eight ball. Yeah, but I think it's, you know, everyone's in the same position. You look at Aston Villa last night, you know, they, they didn't travel anywhere and they've got a number of positive tests. So, you know, we can't pin it all just purely on us deciding to go to Dubai or not. You know, around the country, you know, the, the country's in a very difficult situation, whether it be in sport or outside that. Um, and no one wants to get the virus, but unfortunately, the way it is and, uh, it's difficult to control. People are going to get it. You know, we obviously try and limit the risk as much as we possibly can in our bubble. Um, but, you know, in, in the period so far, we've had a couple of tests ourselves when guys have been away on international duty and everything else. So, again, we just have to, um, every time we approach a, a new hurdle, we just have to cross that and deal with it as it comes. Well, um, first and foremost, Let's deal with that. Here's a statement that came out from Celtic regarding uh, the return of the positive test and, of course, the players who have to self-isolate. Uh, this is what the club had to say on the issue. Celtic confirmed today Christopher Julian has tested positive for COVID and is self-isolating at home. We wish Christopher a speedy recovery. While all of the other members of the squad and backroom team have tested negative, we've been informed by the authorities that having been deemed close contacts Celtic manager Neil Lennon, assistant John Kennedy and 13 first team players will be required to self-isolate. Mm -hmm. Celtic will, of course, fulfil its fixture against Hibernian this evening. Uh, clearly, we are hugely disappointed, as we know our supporters will be. Uh, the contacts were identified during the period from Wednesday last week, primarily around flight and team coach travel, during which time Celtic applied the same rigorous protocols used for pre-season training camps, UEFA match travel and for all domestic match arrangements in Scotland. Um, it goes on to say uh, in this uh, piece that uh, these protocols have served as well in the past as the club has not had one positive case in our own bubble until now. As we already stated, Celtic's decision to travel to Dubai for a training camp was for performance reasons. Whilst we were in Dubai, the announcement made on January 4th significantly changed the COVID landscape. The reality is that a case could well have occurred had the team remained in Scotland, as other cases have done in Scottish football and across UK sport in the past week. Celtic has done everything it can to ensure we have in place the very best procedures and protocols. From the outset of the pandemic, Celtic has worked closely with the Scottish Government and Scottish football, and we will continue to do so. So, that's a statement from the club. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon mentioned uh, that uh, she was at odds with their stance on it. She certainly, from the pictures and from information that she has, 
she still felt as if this was not an ideal time to go to Dubai for a training break uh, in warm weather training. And uh, she has gone on to say that uh, elite sports should not abuse their privilege. And she will review the situation. Ruffy, what's your take on it? Well, I think we all agreed that uh, it, was a, uh, it was an unfortunate move that Celtic made uh, in present circumstances when the virus is at uh, possibly its worst again. The decision to go was a bad one, bad PR one. You know, Celtic stuck to their guns, you know, and I think now we all hoped it wouldn't pan out to be this, but it has panned out now and, and now Celtic have to deal with it. Uh, it, it's a, just a pure error of judgment for me, you know, and I, I, I don't believe the bubble that he's talking about uh, was 100%. It just proved that it isn't 100%, you know, with the, the protocols that we're now hearing now. And, and it'll be interesting to see what that Celtic team is tonight that, that takes the field, but they'll just have to ride the storm now. I, I don't think there's any excuses. Uh, you can, they can try and make, throw out excuses if they want, but I think and from a PR point of view, I think everybody would agree it was a bad, bad move to go away at this precise moment in time. Yeah. Um, now, listen, I, I'm going to offer a, a note of balance on this because I'll read out as many messages as I possibly can. Um, before we get to the hysteria of it, um, again, the emphasis here is on the fact of morally, when the country is in a shutdown, should they have gone? Not legally, because legally, through the SFA, through the SPFL, in consultation with the government, they were cleared to go, Alison. Um, I think the real issue here is an error of judgment on the right thing to do. Yeah, whether you, you can do something and whether you should do something are two entirely different matters. Uh, there, there's no question it's been a, 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 a grim and 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 dangerous mistake that we've made and in a season of relentless pressure celtic have just invited a whole other whole other barrel of pressure back onto the club and back onto themselves they're they're, they're firmly up against it tonight in the the game against hibs the um all eyes are on this game you're talking about 13 players who are now missing uh, you're missing a backroom team i uh, understand the argument that you could so someone could pick up the virus anywhere you could it could have happened in lennox town but i think the procedures that are in place are stringent enough to try and prevent that from happening you're not sharing an aeroplane and in, in the same way that you're not supposed to be sharing cars because when you're in a confined space we all know that the the virus is is hugely contagious so i think it, it was a serious misjudgment and i think the ramifications of it will be felt for quite some time and I'm not sure they're only going to be confined to the park just now. Uh, we're talking about Celtic being reduced in personnel but but this is a story that's not going to go away lightly at a time when football itself is hanging by a thread to, to keep on going and, and to, to see out the season at a time when numbers are, are going through the roof again. Uh, the other aspect of this is uh, the one thing that we'll never know, Tam, uh, you'll never be able to actually trace to the point of where there was an infection. Uh, you'll never be able to trace to the point where the knowledge of Christopher Julian and when he caught it and contracted it. I mean, I, I, the big question from a lot of people and especially a lot of fans on here, why was Christopher Julian there in the first place? He was injured. Why take him to Dubai? Yeah, that's a strange one, Peter. Um, they actually took injured players over to Dubai and I just don't see it as essential travel. You know, Celtic have got under soil heating at Lennox Town on their grass. They could have trained at Lennox Town on the grass, if, you know, if they wanted to go abroad. They've obviously went abroad, they wanted some sunshine, but that, that's not essential. You know, you want, you want to go and train in warm weather. You know, they could have trained easily at home. And, and John Kennedy made a good point there when he was speaking. He said that players have contracted it through international duty. And why is that? Because they're travelling. And Alison just touched on it there, aeroplanes, airports. You know, that, that's, you're putting yourself at risk when you're going and travelling. And Celtic could have kept it well within their own bubble and trained at Lennox Town. Um, morally it was wrong, I just don't think it was the right thing to do and now, is it any coincidence that the day that the, the day that's announced that Celtic have got a, a positive test at low, so we're on the last legs here um, with Nicola Sturgeon and the government, I think they're ready one more you know, mistake or out, outbreak within a club in Scotland and the whole thing is just going to, it's going to get stopped, the Premier League Championship as well so I think we're on the last warning and it was, it was really stupid, stupidity from Celtic to go to Dubai and others might pay the price for that yeah, but the other aspect of it and the answer that came out there, um, Alison, which didn't wash with me, was the fact that, you know, they did indeed um, 
have all the permission. Um, but, uh, you know, going out to Dubai, I think everybody, everybody in the country was well aware that we were heading into lockdown. It's not as if it was something that was going to come out of left field that was going to be new. Everybody knew we were heading into lockdown. And the other aspect of it that really doesn't sit well with anyone is we're in a situation, and Dubai was ha having cases of uh, COVID. Everyone was well aware that there were new strains of COVID-19. Uh, and that it must have set alarm bells off. There must have been an 11th hour chat to say, listen, guys, maybe we should just can this. Okay, it's expensive, but who cares? You know, just can it. Yeah, I think when the decision was made to go, it was early to mid-November. I think we all saw the, the change that occurred in the country within the four months that followed that and the run-up to Christmas. Christmas was effectively cancelled for all of us. Uh, you could see what was coming. We knew that schools were going to close for an extra week. We were braced for home learning. We were really going back to where we were in March at the very beginning of lockdown, I think. Uh, I think someone at the club should have said that this is not a good idea and it's not a good idea for, for so many vantage points. It doesn't look good. The optics of it are poor, even taken away from the fact that you've just lost at, at Ibrox and you're so far behind in terms of the league table, but, but also when you're in the midst of a global pandemic and the only positive cases that you've returned so far are when your players have gone off on international duty. I think it would have been common sense to, to put the brakes on it and, and to content yourself with a, a week at Lennox Town, just going, going through the motions. And the other thing away from the, the pandemic and everything else is Celtic have four games in hand, three once they've played this game tonight. But last midweek would have been an opening to play one of those games in hand. They could have played on Saturday, played this game tonight from against Hibs on Saturday, which would have given them the opportunity to put a wee bit of pressure on Rangers too ahead of their journey up to Pataudry. There are so many levels where it just it, it doesn't make sense for them to have gone. Ian John Miller, who's on our Facebook page, says uh, they must face disciplinary action. Well, uh, not according to the SFA Chief Executive, Ian Maxwell. Celtic were over there. They've gone through a full review with the, the government group over the weekend. They have reviewed all the protocols that have been in place. Um, and that type of travel is allowed. You know, there are... Um, measures in place when they're abroad, you know, in terms of the way they interacted within the hotel, they kept them, they had their own protocols in place when they were over there. And it's fair to say that if Celtic had been at home, they would still have had potentially one positive case, but it would have been one player that was missing. And that is the danger of travelling abroad. You know, there is a lot more risk, inherent risk involved in that from a close contact perspective, because there is travel on plane and, planes and travel on buses. So from that perspective alone, I'm, I'm sure Celtic are are revisiting the, the requirement to go and, and, and the, the, the decision that they made. Now, the, the other dilemma here, this isn't over, Tam, because there's a, there's a double whammy, which I want to get your thoughts and Ruffy's on, which is the double whammy is there's 13 players who are not available. <clears throat> the suggestion, an early rumour at the moment, is that it may be two of the players who were involved at some point in the game against Rangers. Um, it could be much more. I'm only at this moment reading into it, scurrying around, making calls. But of the 13 players that are out, if you lose the game tonight, that opens up another can of worms. Then, you, you know, you really do go to DEFCON 5 on the madness which will unfold. Yeah, listen, the Celtic supporters must be absolutely raging at the club, but the board... You know, everybody at the minute, you know, a lot of Celtic supporters are making big sacrifices. You know, they've obviously paid their season ticket money to start of the season and uh, they're making sacrifices and, and it just looks as if, you know, Celtic are, are going abroad willy-nilly when it wasn't essential and they're coming back. And if they lose this game tonight or drop points, then the Celtic fans have got every, every reason to, you know, event their fury again at the team and the board for, for going abroad because, you know, we don't know how what, what, what sort of team Celtic are going to have out. They might still have a strong side, but... At the end of the day, you know, they're still going to be missing players, 13 players, and, and that's, a, that's a big part of your squad. So the pressure is on massively on Celtic tonight to, to go and get a victory. And else, as you say, I think the league's done anyway, but I think the fans will be really entitled to go and really vent again uh, at, at the board and at the players because it's, it shouldn't have happened. This shouldn't be happening. Yeah, uh, uh, there, are, there are players who will be self-isolating, the manager and the assistant, Ruffy. It might not be the end of people who eventually come out who test positive. The other aspect of the, this, which I think sometimes gets lost in all this mix, is Hibernian have to come to 
Celtic Park. The health, the health of their players. Yeah, I mean, what about yeah. what about Hibernian's uh, take on this? Yeah, it's, it's a really really difficult one, and I think. I think you touched on it as well. I mean, uh, all the games we've been watching and the, the high-profile games uh, during the games, that, that there's no any two-metre distance at all. If somebody scores a goal, they're all jumping on top of each other. You know, and obviously in the 90 minutes of a game, there'll be, you know, very, very close contact, uh, which is unfortunate. And you're right, you know, Hibs and any other team uh, who now come into contact with a... Uh, a team who have had the, the virus, you know, have got to be worried. I mean, I think uh, Ball and Goalie, I think he played against Kilmarnock, you know, when he had it, you know. So it's a really, really difficult one. But I think that's why it's getting worse. I think that's why it's just getting out of hand now, because uh, all these things are happening. And uh, you touched on it earlier. Nobody knows how you get it, when you get it, where you're getting it from. It's just getting out of hand just now. So you would think everybody would be paying more attention and to get back to going to Dubai, doesn't he send out that message? Yeah, um, the game itself it almost seems like an afterthought for so many people because there's such a, a fury around what has developed uh, since, of course, uh, the players returned. And, of course, that picture of seeing uh, Julian coming down the stairs holding his crutches uh, and, and then the aftermath of him uh, returning a positive test certainly has set the cat among the pigeons. There are thousands upon thousands of people offering their thoughts on what should happen. We've given you the take from the SFA Chief Executive, the Celtic statement on it. Nicola Sturgeon has had a, a you know a press briefing um, to talk about COVID and, of course, then address the issue uh, of the privileges of elite sport uh, across the country. And she's clearly at odds with what Celtic say and what she believes was the right thing to do. Um, and she used the uh, statement uh, to say, you know, the evidence that, that she has uh, looked over and the pictures that she saw certainly puts her at odds um, with what Celtic's stance is on this. Um, you can give us your view. We'll try and read out um, as many of the sensible points of view on this because, quite simply, um, we have got to a situation where there is no uh, punishment that will come. The one thing that could come as punishment is, of course, uh, the financial implications for all with this league as we go through the race between getting a vaccine and, of course, uh, the people that are infected and our ability to actually play sport behind closed doors. Because now, Ruffy, we have a situation where under the championship, the leagues have been closed down uh, and the Scottish Cup has been shut down for that month uh, to give them a chance to reschedule these games as well. Yeah, it's, it's a sore one for the, the likes of us in Falkirk. Uh, I think a lot of the clubs in the first division, the part-time clubs, would probably welcome that three-week uh, break, you know, obviously through the financial circumstances of the whole thing. But it's a tough one to get your head around. Uh, uh, our players can't train together now. We, we, they've been sent home to train individually, so we're back to last March again, you know, the the window we were hoping to strengthen, as Falkirk would probably be as well, you know, has been shut for us now. Uh, you can't bring anybody in if there's no games to play. So it's a, it's a really, really tough one to get your head around and, and really, really disappointing. Because I think a way back then, I think we all predicted something like this was going to happen down the road. We hoped, <clears throat> excuse me, we hoped it wouldn't happen, uh, but it looks as if it has now, you know, and uh, for I'm, I'm not going on a party this will bandwagon for a full time club. Uh, we just seem to be keep getting hit all the time, you know. Obviously, the money side of it as well. And now we're being hit again. When when a way way back we 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 offered league reconstruction for full time clubs to all stick together, and it was outvoted. So no, it's it's a disappointing one. Really, really disappointing. I feel disappointed for the manager and the players. You know, they I don't know how they must be thinking at this precise moment in time. They're all geared up to, to have a good run in and it's just not going to happen just now. Well, um, as far as the shutdown is concerned, here's why uh, they came to that decision, according to the Chief Executive Ian Maxwell. The GRG have met every day since March last year to discuss the COVID situation and the impact that that's going to have on football. Um, it crystallised, obviously, last week there were increased restrictions introduced by Scottish Government. That then led to, to debate and discussion amongst the GRG, which culminated on Friday in a request that a SFA board meeting was called to, to discuss a suspension further. 
it's a really tough decision. It's a really difficult decision. You know, we're the governing body for football. We want to see football played for as long as we possibly can, but we felt that with the increase in cases, with the increased risk of transmission from the new strain of the virus, then it was the right call to make to, to limit um, football's impact on that. So um, that's why they came to the decision. Got a lot of people on uh, our message sites here suggesting, you know, that um, Nicola Sturgeon and the government should intervene and put out penalties. Um, that's not the government's role, Alison. They're, they are there to offer their uh, guidance on COVID to try and keep the country in a situation where not only are they informed, but they can try uh, to the best of their ability to stop the increase in the figures of COVID and work out how to get as many people vaccinated as possible. If there are penalties anywhere within Scottish football, it has to be governed and policed by the authorities, the SFA and the SPFL. Yeah, where the government come into it is a, a public health concern, really. It's it's a it's part of the plan to, to keep the numbers limited and to try and suppress the the rapid rise that we've seen over the last month in, in cases. I think we're up to roughly two just under two and a half thousand new cases every day. Uh, so it's a public health concern in football, whether it likes it or not, is is part of that picture. So it still forms a, a significant part of society. It's it's it has these elite privileges just now, but I think the the indications are that it's hanging by a thread. I, I agree with Tam. I think if there's there's one more incident, then I think they make the decision whether or not to just send everyone into isolation and and, and close it down, which I'm sure they're reluctant to do. It's I think football at the current time and a, a point in, in all our lives when we can't go out and all the things that you normally do for, for entertainment and for socialisation have been taken away. I'm sure there would be great reluctance, great reluctance to, to stop football too, given what it offers. But you have to adhere to the protocols and you, you have to be seen to be taking some kind of responsibility where that's concerned. To, to go back to the point about punishments and, and taking action, we've, you know, we've seen that this term when people have been un, unable to fulfil fixtures. Uh, we'll await the outcome this week with St Mirren and, and, and Kilmarnock appealing the call to dock them points from games that they were forced to forfeit because they couldn't play games w when they were without a, a number of key players. But um, Celtic have been are, are gifted in that department because they have such a big squad that they should have the resources to still put out a, a fairly established team this evening. But if the same kind of numbers were to affect a smaller team, I think they would struggle to, to, to play the game. They would struggle to affect, struggle to fulfil the fixture. And then you do have a case where you're looking at a points deduction. Yeah, Gary McPherson's just said on Facebook, um, Peter, are you now a government advisor? Um, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> I couldn't think of a job less appealing than working in government uh, right now, I have to tell you. Although I have to say, Tam, the least favourable job in sport at the moment has to be the PR people at Celtic uh, and anyone else in that board <laughs> because... <laughs> I wouldn't like to be. Can you imagine supporters being allowed anywhere near the grounds on mass in a huge, you know, in huge numbers? They would be getting it tight at the moment. It's social media uh, that's the only area where people to vent their anger. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think if there was supporters in at Celtic Park tonight, you know, they would be going going nuts. To be honest, and rightfully so, as you said, it's it's a massive thing for for supporters who have paid money and. They're making sacrifices, uh, you know, for, for football still to go ahead. You know, football gets scrapped, it affects a lot of people, it affects supporters, it affects their mental health, it affects all us in the media. We, you'll not be getting uh, jobs and not getting work. So, you know, it's, it's really in a precarious position just now. You know, I, I think that one more one more strike and, and it, it is out. I think Nicholas Sturgeon has been threatening that for a while. Um, so it's up to the players and the clubs to have, they've got massive responsibility at the minute, you know, to stay in their bubble and not to produce any positive tests and, and to keep the season rolling because we want to get this season finished. Nobody wants to go down the road of you know, suspensions, null and void, all that kind of stuff. You know, We want to get the season finished and look ahead to next season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, well, that's us gone through the real painful stuff. Um, over and above that, um, there is a small matter of football uh, tonight. Uh, Celtic against Hibs off the back of that 22-point advantage, uh, Ruffy, because Rangers uh, dispatched two past Aberdeen with only one in reply and got all three points in a difficult place, which is Pataudry. Yeah, again, it wasn't, uh, wasn't an impressive performance of what we've seen throughout the year, but they're winning games. 
obviously the, the Aberdeen boy getting sent off made it a wee bit easier. I think it was a great game up until then, end to end stuff. Uh, lots of opportunities. I think the penalty itself is obviously it's debatable. You know that uh, uh, you probably won't agree with me here. I've watched it the first time I saw it from a distance. I said penalty. And then I watched it on TV, and I have to say I watched it on TV about 15, 16, 17 times. There is no doubt to me there was contact. Uh, was there enough contact for him to go down? I don't think so. Uh, I've looked at it on numerous occasions, and I'm going to give you a chance to look at it yourself after I say what I'm going to say. Uh, I think he tripped himself up. Uh, I think he actually put one foot behind the other uh, and made it a lot easier for the referee to make that decision. Uh, and if you look at it on numerous occasions, you'll see what I mean. Well, there's you always catch me on the hop, Ruffy. Every yeah. now and then, you you amaze well, me. Let, let um, me Stephen Stephen Gerrard said he was wiped out. Do you agree with that? Well, let's hear what Stephen Gerrard said. I, I haven't had anyone debate that. I haven't had anyone on the planet debate that. I don't think anyone will. He's about to put the ball in the back of the net from five six yards, and he gets totally wiped out. That's always been a red card and always will be, because you're denying a goal scoring opportunity. So, the the first red card won a million percent right. Mm, Tom, I've got to totally disagree with Ruffy. Sorry, I, I think it was a stonewall penalty kick. I thought he clipped him. I don't think it was intentional, but he's clipped his heels. You know, as he said there, I don't think he's wiped out. I think he's gone a bit farther, but I think it's a hundred percent penalty. You know, he's clipped him in the act just about to shoot. Um, and in the rules of the game, the rules state that it's a red card as well. Now, we don't write the rules. I'm sure every single person here and every single person watching it thought the red card was harsh um, because he, he, he just clipped his heels. But if you're making no genuine attempt to get the ball, then in the, 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 you know, the rule book, it's a red card if you're stopping a goal scoring opportunity. So I think the referee got it absolutely spot on. And, and people might disagree with that, but it's in the rule book. You know, he's not made any attempt to get the ball. Okay. He's, Morelos has just came across him, but that's what strikers are supposed to do in the box. They might go across defenders because you might get clipped. And I think he's clipped his heels. It's a red card, and it was a penalty uh, in my book. Yeah, and as far as um, the other situation, which was Curtis Main's challenge, which uh, prompted a yellow, there was calls for red on that. Um, here's what Derek McInnes had to say about it all. Well, he did, but he goes in too aggressively, so um, it is a yellow card. He's no, he's no hurt the boy. The boy, the boy's fine. Um, boys running about fine. Um, uh, so, you know, like I say, there's a lot of people kind of losing their their what, what, uh, their, their um, marbles a wee bit there. And uh, the right decision was made by the referee. The, the right decision, once to explain, with the penalty was was the right decision. The sending off, and it was the right decision with Curtis Main. Losing their what? Yeah, Derek? well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, losing their marbles, absolutely. <laughs> well, well, absolutely. But uh, to be fair, to be fair, the whole of Scotland is losing his marbles at the moment, so no surprise on that one. Um, listen, Ruffy's got his own opinion on it. Um, mm -hmm. My take on this. Yeah, uh, can, I, can I just say, will you go and have a yeah. look at it? Will you go and have a look I, at it when we finish? Listen, uh, Ruffy, I haven't had a look at no, it. just for a piece of Seventeen mind. times. Um, so that I know that I did see something. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't had a look at it 17 times. I've had a look at it enough to say that Morelos was denied a goal-scoring opportunity. Um, that's the first thing. He's in and goal. There's nobody going to stop him getting at least a shot away on this one. So even with all the different angles on it, I've had a look at it, and I think um, you know, I think it's a penalty. And I think you know, by being denied a goal-scoring opportunity, it's a tough one for John Beaton. But I think it's a red card as well. I think he called that. Um, I think he called that right. Um, but, you know, listen, everybody's got their opinion on it. Tam, your thoughts? No, I did. I thought, I thought it was a stonewall penalty in the red card, but uh, the, the main one, I don't think it's a red, Peter. I don't think it's... I know yeah. he's went in. You know, he's went in, and I've done that as a striker a million times, and the ball gets played out of the fullback. You get in and you try and win the ball. I think he's tried to get in and win the ball. Um, you know, he's went in a bit, a bit high. I don't think he's, he's, he's dangerous or reckless, and I think the yellow card was, was definitely the right call for that one, but... The, the the beating the, the penalty the penalty the red card on Hedges was was spot on for me. Alison, I think you could have made an argument for it to be a red card for me. I, I thought it was quite reckless the challenge. I have to say. 
I agree with the, okay. the penalty. I, I thought it was a penalty and I thought it was a red card. And we can argue about it being soft and all the rest of it. But by the letter of the law, the referee is quite right. I think you've got to you've got to send them off. So he's a, denying a goal scoring opportunity. But I thought Mains was quite aggressive, and I think if he had not, if he hadn't already dismissed one, I think he he might have went for the red. Yeah, um, listen, 22 points. Rangers are a tough place to go, Ruffy. Uh, they came out with all three points in the end. Yeah, they looked as if they controlled the game. Obviously, the sending off, uh, if you'd asked uh, Derek, he would have said that probably turned the game for them. But uh, they kept plugging away. But now Rangers look comfortable. Uh, and obviously, you know, getting the two goals, you know, gives, uh, you know, you come away from Petorji, I said on Friday. So it's one of these ones you would tick the box, that Easter Road, where you would look to maybe drop a couple of points or whatever, but they didn't. And that, that just shows you that's two games now we, we against opposition that have not had 11 people in the park, but they went about their job and they've got the win. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'll tell you, as far as uh, uh, the other games are concerned over the weekend, Dundee United against St. Johnson didn't quite make it. Um, as far as um, I just actually said here, I can. Uh, I, I love this programme because it just hits that time when there's, there's, uh, there are things that come out. And one of them is, Hibs have consulted their players today over whether they feel comfortable playing in tonight's game. Some are believed to have reservations about participating, but it is unclear at this stage if they have chosen not to play. Wow, that is, that's just out, Tam. That really does put the cat among the pigeons. Listen, we mentioned it earlier on the show. You know, it's, you know Hibs have been in, a, in their own bubble. And I think as far as I, as far as I know, I think only Gogic, uh, when he went away to play in international duty, has returned a positive test. So, Hibs have done everything by the book. And uh, I, I think they've every right to have reservations about going to play in the game. You know, if you've got a, you know, a, a team of players who have been sitting on a plane and sitting in the airports and they've returned positive tests, you know, I think the players are a big semi-final coming up as well for Hibs uh, in, a, in a week or two. So, I think they've every, every right to, to, to voice their concerns about going there, whether the player or not. Is up to them, but it's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not surprised that that's come out, let's put it that way. Yeah, that's a huge call. And the reason as well, which I think a lot of football fans will have to take into consideration, uh, Alison, is uh, the Hibs players may well be in their own bubble, but they do go back to their own families. And, uh, and that leaves it open again. It's not as if it's just an enclosed area and everybody lives in a commune. That's not the case. You know, this whole thing can suddenly just escalate so I'm not, I'm not in the least, I'm like Tam in this. I think this is a, it's a perfectly normal, uh, you know, statement coming out from Hibs. I, uh, you know, we, we did talk about it earlier on, what are the repercussions for them? And, and they're quite serious because this new, you know, variant uh, of the COVID is making everybody even more nervous, especially when the First Minister says it's, you know, it's peaking and in some cases surpassing the numbers from March. First and foremost, no one knows the vulnerabilities that people might be surrounded by in terms of their wider family and immediate family. But second of all, too, you think, well, if you if you come into a, a positive, if any of those Celtic players are incubating the virus and have a subsequent positive test, which may yet be the case, you could be in danger of passing it on. And if that's the case, then you're denied players going forward into, into other games at the weekend and, and next week, and including some pretty big games that are on the horizon so you can understand their reservations what I would say is we're at a time in the day, it's half past four now you're at a point in the day where you really have to make a decision fairly quickly Yeah uh, it's a big call and I don't think it's too far away and uh, you know, I can tell right now I'm getting calls uh, coming in regarding the game because it's a game that obviously uh, I would have been attending uh, tonight Ruffy but it's a, it's a real dilemma I don't think we're too far away from an official statement on whether the game goes ahead, Ruffy. Well, the unfortunate thing about it is the SPFL and the SFA asked all the clubs to put things in place like this, uh, but they refused to. So it's a difficult one to call. Uh, I can see where Hibs are coming from, but who, who makes the decision? The, 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 if Hibs don't play the game, do they lose the three points? Do Celtic get the game because they're prepared to put a team out there? Then you're, you're opening a whole can of worms here because the clubs themselves haven't put anything in place whatsoever to make these kind of decisions. 
my biggest problem with this as well, uh, Tom, is the implications for a, a, a television company that are that's basically propping up Scottish football at the moment, and that is Sky TV. I was just I was just thinking that, Peter. You know, Sky Television. If, if the clubs get, you know, they're in their contract, they've got to play the games. You know, Sky have, have paid out the money, and uh, they'll be looking for a, obviously to put the game on tonight, live on the TV, beamed out. And uh, I'm sure they'll be asking questions about if this game gets cancelled because of this issue. You know, as Ruffy said, it opens up a whole can of worms in terms of compensation and paying money back to clubs. And that's why I said it's so important that this, this season completes because there's so many variants in terms of contracts and Sky and TV money and league positions in Europe that it's got to go ahead. But, oh, it's, that, that is, that's came out of left field. And as you said, it's, it's half four. I'll be getting ready to go to Parkhead shortly as well. So I'll be wanting to know if the game's going to go ahead or if I'm going to be sitting in the house. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, oh, what a waste of all my notes all weekend. But <laughs> <laughs> never, nevertheless, I have to say, um, safety is of paramount importance to everyone. And I, and I think from a professional point of view, I think right now there is absolutely no doubt um, from a government perspective, from an SPFL, and SFA club's perspective as well. I'm sure Ron Gordon um, will at this moment with, uh, of course, uh, Peter Lowell and all uh, the bodies involved in this will be right now talking about the implications. What can they do? What can they not do? Um, what is the fallout from potentially this game being postponed tonight? It is it is an evolving uh, story at the moment, and when it gets to its conclusion, um, we'll obviously be discussing it in greater detail. But um, there is no doubt that the, some Hibs players have voiced their real concern. And when you think about people, professionals, uh, sports people, and the fact that they have to go home to their families, um, this is a re this is a it's opened up a real can of worms, and I think the general consensus from all of us, and consistently over this period, is morally, um, and I think from a point of view of taking a stance and looking at the bigger picture in Scottish football, Celtic should not have gone uh, on that trip, and now Hibs have voiced their concerns, um, the legalities of whether they had permission and everything we've already established. Ian Maxwell, the SFA chief executive, has again reiterated what Celtic said. Going back to the, uh, I think the 11th or 12th of November, uh, when they intimated that they would like to go to warm weather training in Dubai, that was all above board. Um, they had uh, all the permissions in place, and of course they maintained they had all the rigorous protocols needed. But subsequently, since then, we have one player with a positive test. The need, because Dubai is now on the excluded list, uh, the need for self isolation for 13 players the manager, Neil Lennon, and the assistant, John Kennedy. So you're getting the news up to date and thousands upon thousands of people are all offering their uh, thoughts on it and lots of sensible ones as well. Of course, the other thing that sticks in the back of my head going forward here, you know, finishing seasons, Ruffy, um, we don't have to look for any great precedent, you know, too far away. All we have to do is look back to last season. If they can't finish the season, um, for me, it's the same, we're in the same boat, the same opinion for me as last season. If they were calling this league, yeah. you would give Rangers the title and you would relegate the bottom team and you'd forget about reconstruction because it's such a stupid country uh, with a group of, uh, and I don't mean our country as a whole, I mean such a, a group of people who, for me, missed a great opportunity to think about the collective and help Scottish football by reconstruction so we can't have that. We can't move that on either, Ruffy, because they've already put themselves yeah. in a corner with the stupid decisions they made last season. Yeah, you're right. And it just, if uh, you shut your eyes and think of the, the mess we were all in last year, when it came to all the votes uh, here and there and why they were voting this and why they were voting that. And uh, I think it's a scenario that we hope we don't go down again. Uh, it was a horrible experience for lots of lots of people at certain clubs and uh, it's going to hurt certain people as well and this, this comes back to watch what you're voting for uh, because it could be you the next time so it'd be interesting to see what happens I think the main thing is that uh, Dundee have got a new fax machine so that might help us along the way <laughs> 
Is no laptop it's for emails. I know. It's, po- it's possibly the only time I think I've laughed today on the programme, Ruffy. Of course. And the other thing is, of course, there'll be a clamour now to see Alison who's in that WhatsApp group, you know, before they even send their their vote and their final vote on it. Indeed. Well, we all know what precedent was set. Uh, but I think all the indications are is that we could be back in that movie again. Uh, I, I just think this has created a problem that football didn't need just now. It was so well advised and the ramifications of it felt very, very predictable. Yeah, absolutely. Thomas McDougall, slightly tongue-in-cheek, says congratulations, Glasgow Rangers winning the league in January. Hey, uh, don't rule those things out. I don't think anybody could put up a case against uh, Rangers uh, being offered the title if it got to that stage, but I think we're jumping uh, ahead of ourselves at the moment. Let's deal with the let's deal with the madness of what's unfolding before our very eyes here. Um, Celtic and Hibs at the moment. Um, we're waiting on a decision on whether that's going to go ahead or not. Uh, to the other games, Livingston managed a three-one win over Ross County. Ruffy, um, I'll tell you one thing: some of our predictions over the weekend were. Uh, are not too good, Ruffy. I, I, you know, uh, did you predict Livingston to beat Ross County? Uh, yeah, you, you actually talked me into you know going two one. Uh, I had two one in my uh, my my first decision, but I'd said one each on air, and you persuaded me to stay at two one. So I got two points uh, for that one, uh, and that was it. I think I know, and I've got another two points somewhere. Mm. But I think you're. Uh, when I get a steer from Clary here, Peter. I'll no, tell you, no, I'll Ruffy, tell you. Ruffy, well, let me find Ruffy, out. Ruffy, there <laughs> I, was no change. Got, there was no change from what you submitted to me on the, the WhatsApp group. I've got one each. So you'll get two points. And Tom's get two points. points. Correct. And yeah. I'll get two points for Kilmarnock. That was my four points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I asked no. Kilmarnock. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, absolutely. I had Kilmarnock. Um, Listen, uh, St Mirren against Motherwell. Um, this one again uh, brought about a, a, a fair bit of consternation. Uh, Graham Alexander, welcome to Scottish football. He felt as if the referee was influenced in the penalty decision. I, th- I thought it was coming a little bit because of um, uh, it was a, an influence. I felt you know there was a lot of noise uh, on virtually every challenge. On I mean every challenge, personally. Um, and uh, but I have seen it back, and it's it's lim- lim- uh, limited touch, if if any at all. Should it have been a penalty, Tom? No. No, no, well done, it was Ali. A penalty yeah. Well no. no, 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 it was never no. never a penalty kick. I mean, the ball. No, hang fire. Now. Hang, <laughs> hang fire. Hang fire. Hang fire. Ruffy, Ruffy has watched it. 32 times and, oh, no, <laughs> and there must have been a there must <laughs> Ruffy I can't wait for your take on it was it a penalty he surely no, not, not a penalty for me you know he did have his arm up on the boy there might have been a bit of contact but for the way he went in you know not for me I mean I'd, if you're going to get in you I mean a penalty is a a big big decision in a game and it gets you a draw or a win or whatever so it's going yeah. to be it's got to be for me a, a, a definite, and that definitely wasn't a definite at all. And I don't Sally. even think the referee the referee saw it. He, he didn't even have a good view of it, and he took maybe two seconds to go. Well, what was it? Is it no? So I'd love them to go. Mm. Why, why have we got linesmen? Why don't they go to the linesman and get a wee just? I think the linesman gave it. So do I? I because Pause. The referee couldn't see, and there was a pause, and he, he consulted yeah. someone. I think it was the, the linesman or the fourth official who gave it to. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, Alison, see that headset you've got on? That's what linesmen have, mm-hmm. Ruffy. And they speak to the referee. Right, and and the referees don't listen to them. Yeah, well, that's a different that's a different issue. Um, they're in constant contact with him and the fourth official as well. Um, did he get it wrong? Um, here's Jim Goodwin. No, I, I don't know. Listen, I, I, Bobby Madden's a, a top referee, you know, hence why he was... Uh, the one chosen for the old farm a couple of weeks ago. You know, in my opinion, he's, he's one of the best in the country. Um, and I thought he had a decent game. You know, I did. I mean, if he's not made the right decision on this occasion, then I'm sure he'll be the first one to hold his hands up. But certainly I felt that Lee Irwin had himself between the ball and the defender. Mm, it's good, Jim, uh, isn't it? It's good. 
He's good yeah, value. Hold on. He's oh, good he's great value. value. Pinoc- the, 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 the little, the little, the little smirk, the little smirk yeah, on his no. face here at the start <laughs> told you everything you needed to know. Hold on, hold on, hang fire, guys, because uh, even more breaking news on this one. Um, Hib's request for Celtic to be tested for COVID-19 again has been refused by Celtic and the SPFL on grounds that it's not required under current protocols. Hibs are turning the screw on this one, Ruffy. Yeah, I would like to think the Celtic players will be tested before they walk on that part, temperature-wise, obviously, right away, but that's no guarantee that none of them are, are carrying uh, the virus, you know. So it's a really, really hard one to get your head around medically, you know. I mean, there may be some Hibs players are carrying it, you know, that nobody knows about. There might be a... Uh, an outbreak there in two or three days through whatever reason. I think I think it goes away back to Kilmarnock when they they get heavily done by and they had to fill they had to field a sort of a, a, a youth team, didn't they? Uh against somebody. And uh that was their exact words. Look, it might be us now, but it'll be somebody else later on. So let's just go on with it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can understand uh, the uh, concerns and the fear that they have at the moment on this one. But uh, I, I, again, you can see how this plot is, is unfolding uh, and it's getting more and more difficult. It's like a, a tangled web now, Alison. Absolutely. The one consideration I would suggest is is why Hibs didn't come forward a bit earlier in the day. I think it was late afternoon yesterday when we knew that there had been one positive test. I think it was inevitable that there were going to be further absences because of, of, of track and trace. I think we knew, I, I'm not sure any of us would have predicted the sheer number when it went up to 13, but I think we were, we were braced for significant numbers coming out this morning. I just wonder if Hibs had maybe moved a bit earlier in the day that, that some of those concerns might have been easier to, to address. It's, we're talking now it's quarter to five. Logistically, would it be possible to, to test everyone and get a result back before the game kicks off now? Well, I think you could do it. Um, uh, I mean, I think that it's perfect. There are tests out there. Um, are they within distance uh, of a medical team to deliver it? I'm sure it could be organised. There's so much at stake here for people who've actually... I mean, Sky's trucks don't turn up at quarter to four on the day. Um, you know, this is a whole operation. Uh, you know, I, I've been there. I know exactly what happens with it. It's it's rigging it, you know, two two days before uh, they're in there. there. There's all sorts of medical checks. There's all sorts of liaising with, the uh, uh, you know, Sky's technical people and Celtic. Um, there's meetings that go on before the game's even anywhere near the ground. Uh, meetings that go on about uh, protocol, what people have to do, um, where people are allowed to go, what passes are required. Um, and, and, and never mind that, the rigging is, you know, hectic. Uh, and of course, it, 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 you know, it takes a long, long time to get it all in place. And let's not forget the staff that come in off the back of that for Sky Sports as well. There'll be constant meetings going on at the moment on this one. So um, there are a few twists and turns ahead. Um, it's not just as simple um, as... You know, can they get them tested? There'll be there'll be all sorts of calls flying about at the moment to make decisions. And of course, let's not forget there will be you know people speaking to legal people within the SPFL on this to check the rules, check where Hibs can go with it, how far can they push it, should it be called, who makes the call on whether it goes ahead or not. Um, really difficult times on this one. Um, so we'll keep you up to date. If there is any further developments before we go off air, we will read them out to you. Um, as far as the games played over the weekend, here's how the table looks um, in the Premiership in Scotland. And Rangers, it is absolutely incredible when you look at it. Look how far ahead Rangers are at the top. If you're calling the league now, um, there'd be no problem in handing the title over to Rangers. Um, it looks as if it's one of those battles for second, third and fourth that's going on, uh, unless you think differently. And at the bottom end, if they were calling it right now, it would be with one point uh, between Ross County and Hamilton. If they were calling that league right now, Tam, Ross County would be relegated. No argument. Yeah, I think they were the ones that one of the clubs that and Ruffy will probably tell me the same that were against the reconstruction. So I don't think there'd be a tear shed in the Ruffy household. Uh, plus, <laughs> you, we know he hates Ross County anyway. But no, no, it would be harsh. It would be very harsh. But listen, as Alison said, the president has been set last season, you know, and uh, 
you know, you would give Rangers a title. I think they've been the best team this season anyway. And they, you'd have to look at the bottom of the league and whoever's in that position, you would have to relegate. But hopefully it doesn't come to that. Um, we're all pretty yeah. we can get the season keep, to see, keep going. See, see how, the, I mean, we know Rangers are head and shoulders away above everybody. But what would it be if it went to points per games? Would there be as big a gap? With Celtic now have played four games left. If you went points per game. Yeah. What does it matter, Ruffy? Rangers are still winning the league. Well, no, still win the league. That's how you win it. Oh, I, I don't follow your I don't follow your, well, your if position. They decide, on this if they come out and have a vote if they come out and have a vote and say no, the whoever wins the league is whoever has the points per games played over the yeah. others. I'm just wondering what the difference would be if that was brought into fruition. Only yeah, dropped four yeah, points, uh, Ranger, so it would still be, be a, be a, yeah. be a fairly high average. Yeah, so yeah. I'm thinking of it. Celtic don't play the next six games. Yeah. Um, he's, well, he's don't think, <laughs> oh, absolutely. Is don't think right too hard about it. Listen, to be perfectly honest with you, you've already, you've already denied Rangers a penalty and a red card for oh, edges. Oh, Tony, what, you're, you, you, Peter, will you please shingly, watch that? Will you watch that for me? You're a shingly peg. You, yeah, you have to watch that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Please watch it. Um, I'll get it out in a box set as well and go oh. back over it. Um, oh. Anyway, apart from anything else, the penalty is a red card. Uh, now, um, what about Team of the Week? <laughs> Has Gabriel managed it? Yes, he has. Jack Alnick made a fantastic save from a Tony Watt header to keep the scores level. Aaron McGowan got up and down the right flank all game for a dominant killie. Ben Sterling has become Hamilton's stalwart at the back and was a standout in a losing side. Brandon Hornstrup played high and put in some brilliant crosses. Scott Wright played in several different positions but excelled and showed why Aberdeen won't want to let him go. Jamie McGrath scored from the spot again, taking him to seven for the season. Glenn Kamara can do everything and nearly got a goal to cap off his display. Alan Forrest only played 25 minutes but won the game for Livy with a goal and an assist. Greg Kilty scored twice and is a guaranteed starter for Killy now. Alfredo Morelos looked back to his ruthless best with two clinical finishes. Tony Watt was sharp and involved in all of Motherwell's good play, including the goal. Not a bad side, not a bad side. Uh, Gab's always tries to be fair. Have we missed anybody, Tom? Do you want a Hibs player in before they've even kicked a ball? <laughs> Yeah, I, I would put that in there. I think he's going to score two tonight. So I'd have had him in. No, I think his team's spot on. And I must, I must say, yeah. Morelos is right back to his best at the weekend. Uh, and he, you know, in the last two games, he's obviously got involved in two red cards. And I think that shows you how, how he's back to his sharpness. And maybe that's just something to do with the January transfer window. And maybe that's just me being yeah. cynical. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Ali, uh, yeah, I should be cynical. Ali, I don't want you to comment on this. I just want to try and you keep a, as straight a face as you possibly can um, because obviously, you know, loyalty is the key here. Um, but Remy Gavin says, Ruffy needs dropped from this show. He's deluded, man. <laughs> and Alison has kept Same his straight. <laughs> <laughs> Alison, Alison, you don't need to vote now. You can just tell me on the <laughs> WhatsApp group we have, which doesn't include <laughs> Ruffy. Cast your votes now, folks. Um, yeah, you're Not picking up his shifts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like, Charlie. A good job. A good journalist who can see an opportunity. I'll pick up his shifts. Brilliant. <laughs> um, listen, here's the here's the uh, predictor scores at the moment. And as you can see, oh, how it's all changed, Tam. Tam, what's happened? It's all changed dramatically. Plenty of time, Peter. Plenty of time. I'm going yeah. to do a, a rough patch, a rough patch, but I'll finish strong. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, um, give us your thoughts. Don't forget to stay tuned. Download the app, um, PLZ Soccer. Go on the website, www.plzsoccer.com. We'll keep you up to date with all the stories, Scottish, English, European and world as well. Hit the, uh, hit the follow button. Uh, share it with your friends, uh, the programme on Facebook. We'd love you to do that. We've got a big competition coming up next month uh, if we're still playing football. Um, we'll discuss tomorrow night on the programme, if indeed Celtic have play Tibbs or indeed how this story uh, suddenly unfolds with even more plots uh, it's thickening by the minute Celtic against Tibbs and of course the Covid crisis uh, so there's lots to discuss and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel 
and you can watch us on Twitter. If you get nothing to do tonight, why not watch the clip from Hedges on Morelos for about 19 or 20 times? It'll give you uh, a chance to formulate your opinion on the referee John Beaton's decision on it. Anyway, Scottish football, it's, it's, the, it's the sport that the nation loves, but it just keeps on giving. There's never a dull moment in it. Thank you very much to all the people who've messaged us. Thanks to Alison Ruffey and Tammy Maz. From myself, Peter Martin, thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit 